Hi Champ Car Racers, I am Roy. I am the team captain and one of the drivers for the Parts Badger Miata team. See our car and pieces over there. Uh, getting some questions lately about what we do for prep. I wanna talk a little bit about bolts. Uh, this information we actually got from another team that races in the series uh, early on when we just started. Uh, they've been very successful, very reliable team and we've been doing it ever since. Worked really well for us, so I wanted to share a bit about the process. So I gathered a bunch of stuff, um, which you kind of see here. So for starters, I want to talk about bolts. All the bolts need some type of locking, and the critical bolts, hopefully you have two different types of locking. And before you can use a liquid locker, which I'll talk about all the different types of liquid locker, you need a clean bolt. Um, I have one over here. This one has not been cleaned. Try to get it on camera. There you go. So you can just see the grease in between the threads here. Uh, that is going to mess up your torque numbers. Um, it is going to uh, make this stuff less effective as well. So you want to get a clean bolt. A couple different ways to do that. Uh, in the shop, we use an ultrasonic cleaner. This one right here. Uh, when we disassemble different components in the car, put them all in a group, throw them in this thing, run it for about 15 minutes, and for the most part, it gets all the grease off. Um, something else we use, we have a wire brush. We use that uh, a lot on drain bolts and fill bolts. So I have one of our drain plugs here. Try to zoom in on this guy here. Um, all of our drain plugs, so if it has a crush washer, we make sure that the crush washer is good. Uh, put a crush washer on it. Make sure it's nice and shiny. You can use a wire brush for that. Uh, we don't really have to use brake clean um, on these, but um, if you have residue, you can use brake clean to clean these up. Uh, got a bunch of different goop over here. Um, we have a lot of ultra black. Usually we buy that when they're out of right stuff. So I got a lot of that laying around. We go through right stuff, which is very similar to ultra black. Um, but we use right stuff on all of our fill and drain plugs. So differential fill drain, transmission fill drain, and uh, engine oil drain as well. Um, you make sure you want to use the right uh, silicone. Uh, when needed. So I actually have, I believe this is the fuel resistant stuff. So that used to go when we ran the stock tank on the drain plug for the stock tank. Just making sure that that's nice and sealed because these bolts in the right condition, they will vibrate out. Um, we see it a lot on uh, transmissions and differentials in the Miata world. So this goop just adds another uh, layer of protection. Uh, for other bolts, can kind of go through the Loctite lineup. So not pictured here is what they call Loctite Purple. Loctite Purple is for really small bolts. So like an M3, 440, 632. A level up from purple is blue, which you see with these four bottles here. That is really good for uh, quarter inch M6 type fasteners. Also maybe like an M8 fastener if it's going into aluminum. So this is the mid strength. Uh, Loctite released a new one, which is orange. And Loctite orange can be used on bigger bolts um, or M8 if they're steel to steel. Um, pretty much every other chassis bolt that's M8 or larger is going to get Loctite orange, including some of the suspension. Uh, so shock hats, um, shock mounts, um, non-alignment bolts. Depending on, on how often it's disassembled, I may use an orange or I'm gonna use like a Loctite red. Now here I actually have two different types of Loctite red. Uh, this is the highest strength Loctite. Um, and these three are normal. And I have one here that is actually high temperature. We use that specifically on brakes because this stuff does break down with heat. So we wanna use the high temperature stuff on brakes. Um, over here, we have some liquid uh, PTFE, which is uh, liquid Teflon. 
Um, you can actually brush it on. We use that for all our sensors and anything that uses the thread to seal. So normally, like in the Miata, you have an inverted flare. You don't need that stuff on inverted flare fittings. You don't need it on AN fittings, uh, but you will need it on MPT uh, because the MPT actually uses the threads to seal. Um, so you want to use this stuff on that. Um, then we have this uh, liquid electrical tape, which I don't really use it for electrical uh, insulation, but I do use it to put on the outside of um, switch jam nuts. I put it on the outside of uh, electrical terminal screws uh, because you really don't want to mess up the electrical connection. You don't want to put something like this on it. You can just use this on the outside. That can prevent it from turning. Um, let's see, this is also really good for webbing. So if you have like uh, a webbed toe strap or a uh, drink carrier or something like that, and you cut the web strap, you can actually uh, paint this so it doesn't fray on the end, which is pretty cool. Um, we have our axle nuts, um, which we go through a few brand new ones every year. Um, you can see this is not 30 years old. It's probably used for half a season. Um, you can see in there that the threads start getting pretty marred up internally. Um, you wanna make sure to replace these if, if you can't uh, index that down. Uh, it's really important that you have a good lock on the end of these because these will loosen. Um, it could just ruin your stint, um, but it could also ruin your weekend. The whole wheel could come falling off if one of these things come loose. Um, here we have uh, Nordlock washers, which is a special type of lock washer. Let's see if, if you can see the sides here. They're actually two-piece washers, and they have little ramps on them. So that allows um, different types of locking from vibration and expansion contraction uh, of a bolt. It'll still hold tension greater than just a normal split washer. Um, so we use these on anything uh, brake-related. Um, all of this stuff you can get from McMaster Car. Um, these in particular, you probably can't get these at an auto store. You really got to get these um, online. Another thing about bolts, I have new ones here as an example. A uh, real common one on a Miata is the lower rear outer control arm um, comes loose a lot. Uh, we were told if an OEM bolt ever comes loose during a race, um, not because you loosened it, but because it came loose on the track, you want to replace it with a brand new one. Um, so we get these things here. Um, not only do we replace it with brand new ones when it happens, we use uh, Loctite Red on that as well. It's really weird. Uh, it's pretty common for us that these keep loosening, and I, I hear from other teams as well. Um, have our quarter 20 kit here I want to show you. A uh, bunch of different bolts in here that we use, mainly for our aero packages. We have all the, the grade 2 and grade 5 bolts, uh, which are silver. Grade 8 is this uh, yellowish zinc plating color. So grade 8 is everything wing-related, wing and then just general aero panels and stuff like that. We use the um, lower-grade fasteners. One thing I want to note, um, we have different frames and stuff that we actually attach to the car using grade 8. And then we attach things to the frame using these grade two bolts, grade two or grade five, probably grade two, um, with the idea that if it gets caught on something or something occurs, this is going to shear first and this will rip off and it won't rip off, you know, our subframe type attachments for the arrow structure. Um, so we kind of do that strategically. You don't want to put grade eight because you don't know necessarily what's going to fail if you put that on everything. But if you stagger different grades of bolts, you can um, at least have some chance of the thing shearing that you want to shear rather than the thing you don't want to shear. Um, for locking with, with new non-OEM bolts, um, we use nylock um, almost always on nuts. So you see the nylon in here. We have two different grades of these as well. We have some stainless ones and then grade two or grade five. And then you see the grade eight split lock washers as well. Um, so we use both a lock washer as well as a nylock um, whenever we're using 
aftermarket bolts. And then all our kits just come like this. Pre-labeled so they're easy to access. This is our whole quarter by 20 kit. Most of the aftermarket stuff on the car is quarter 20. Um, something that I didn't mention before about brake clean. So I have red stuff here just as an example of what not to buy. Uh, you don't want to use this. Um, it is a carcinogen. will cause cancer over time. It will kill you. Not right away, but maybe in 40 years it'll kill you. Uh, so you don't want to use this stuff. You want to use the green stuff, which is non uh, chlorinated, uh, generic O'Reilly stuff here, green stuff. I probably had this one for a couple years now, um, just sitting because it never gets used. And then we go through dozens of cans of this stuff, um, use it to clean off all the dirt debris. So uh, that's what we do uh, to keep bolts on the car. Uh, that portion has been working very well. Uh, there's definitely other reliability issues. Um, yeah, before I end the video, one other thing, uh, fuses. So if you have a blade fuse uh, set up like we have in our car, um, those very frequently come out. They're only held in by friction. So a tip that we got from uh, another team was actually to twist the blade of the fuse about 10, 15 degrees, and that provides some really nice friction when you put it in. Uh, stops them from falling out. And then when we're done, take a tube of right stuff, which is the other equivalent of ultra black. It's a little bit better. Um, we put a dab of that on the outside of all of them. We also keep extra, extra fuses uh, in the car in case some fall out. Uh, then we can uh, put a new one in. It has happened before. Um, you know, in endurance racing, you want to stay off the rumbles, but you know, there's certain rumbles you got to hit and those vibrations, those frequencies tends to loosen everything up in the car. Uh, some tracks are a lot smoother than others. I think the really bad one is Sebring. Very notorious. You want to make sure, go through, lock tight every single bolt in the car. Um, actually, before we had gotten the, actually, it's right after we had gotten the, the advice, we had one of our uh, steering column bolts that we did not lock tight because we missed it. Uh, that one came loose and we lost our steering at Sebring, went into a tire barrier. Um, that, that was expensive, wrecked the weekend as well. Um, so you want to be smart about it. You want to go through all the bolts, make sure everything, um, especially the really critical stuff is taken care of. Um, and if you can safety wire too, we've safety wired a few things Intake uh, throttle body, uh, or throttle cable bolts. Uh, we use uh, safety wire on that. If you use two piece rotors, some are designed, uh, for safety wire. We use high temp Loctite that works fine for us. Um, but some are designed for safety wire. You want to make sure you're using that stuff. Keep it safe out on track. So thanks guys. Drive safe.